Welcome to Sibspot. Today's Reddit stories are from Malicious Compliance. Story one is by Milled Oats. Complain to everyone about your work if you must, but you're done working here equals 10 years wages. So every morning I walk my dog at the off-lead dog park. As it's a small town, all the dog walkers have become friendly. I, in my mid-forties, made friends with June, who's 75 to 80 years old. June told me this lovely malicious compliance story from about 25 years ago or more. June was working as a school teacher and was retraining as a social worker. She left teaching for two years working as a social worker when her previous school asked her to run a class for at-risk children. The deal was she would teach children aged 12 to 18, grades 7 through 12, who come from backgrounds of emotional, physical, and sexual abuse. The job was casual, so she didn't get paid for holidays, sick leave, etc. She was supposed to teach six kids with an aid, but ended up with 20 kids and no teacher's aid. As you can imagine, their behavior was terrible. She believed she could help and said she did make some real differences. The work was really stressful, but she was passionate about it. After three years and multiple promises of making her a permanent staff member, getting an aid, plus smaller classes, June was burnt out. She demanded help from the principal, who has refused, and told her since she has complained, it's for the last time, and sacked her. He told her she is casual and she can go complain to everyone everywhere, but as a casual worker, you have little rights. So June did complain to everyone. School inspector, the union, Department of Education. It was a state school and even her local member of parliament who told her she has a tough deal, but this is the life of a casual worker. She finally complained to the state authority that deals with safe work practices. They were interested as the school had breached state policy on class sizes for special needs kids, teachers' aides, providing a safe environment, etc. They ordered the Department of Education to pay her workers' compensation while they sorted it out. So now, June was paid each fortnight including leave and all benefits 52 weeks a year instead of 40. The fallout was big after the investigation. Lots of people sacked or moved on. What this did, Lee, was June without a boss. The Safe Work Practice Department closes the case and they believe it was now a Department of Education matter to pay June out. Everyone has forgotten about June and she got lost in government paperwork. They still paid her and she kept quiet. It took 10 years before they found her in an employee audit. Then they paid her out. June was ready to retire about then, so it worked out beautifully. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there, not most people maybe, but a lot of people who would love to be forgotten in government paperwork. I remember reading one of these stories last week where a person was told to be on standby for reassignment and they were there for one and a half years and they just kept getting paid. They said that they felt like the gravy train would soon derail, and this happens all the time. If there's not somebody really managing all the workers in a school, if there's not somebody you report to, you can get lost in departments at schools very easily. Yeah, but as somebody who used to work in special ed with students, there are requirements to have aides in every class if they're over a certain size, at least in New York State. I know that much. And I don't remember the size anymore, but I remember that you had to have an aide with certain classes if they were problematic students. And if that aide for some reason wasn't there that day, they had to have a substitute come in for that person. So you had to have the teacher and then you had to have either a teaching assistant or a teacher's aide in the room at the same time. Some students need the extra help and some need to be watched because they like to misbehave in class. And it sucks for these people, it sounds like they were breaking the law by making June cover these classes while being a casual worker and having no aid and having big classes and everything. I'm actually really surprised that she was a full-on school teacher and the job was casual. You have teachers that are full-time, how do you have teachers that are casual as well? I mean, we did have some co-workers, I guess, that worked 
they were full on teachers and they worked at different departments or they worked at the nearby jail, for example. So they had less hours, but their job was grueling. I've just never encountered where there's a casual teacher before that doesn't get paid for holidays and whatnot. Our next story is by Old But Not Too Tired. I already said we were going to do it, so just do it. My coworker told me to share this here, new Reddit account, because mine is super identifiable. Ha ha. I work on an IT team for a small company, and one of the things we support are marketing campaigns for our company. So to set the cast, let me call my boss, Kathy, and there's Peter, the sales manager. Peter has this brilliant idea of targeting a cross-section of two audiences for a new marketing campaign. He pitches it in the meeting, and everyone gets super excited about this. After the meeting, Peter asks Kathy to set it up. Kathy pushes back immediately, saying she is confident that this new audience is not worth our time, and it is maybe 200 potential customers out of 200,000. Now, Peter has a lot of sway in the company and doesn't want to admit he made a mistake about his customers and said, well, I already said we were going to do it, so just do it. So I put in the requirements, and it is worse than Kathy thought. 47 people. Once again, this is escalated to Peter, who insists we just do it, and he complains we are behind schedule on getting this done. Admittedly, it has been a few business days because we did not prioritize this stupid request. I pass along the new audience to our marketing folks who design a campaign, set up a couple new pages on the website, etc. Now, on the topic of profitability. Our average transaction sales are pretty small, but a lot of repeat transactions from our customers. But just with the time I've spent on it, there's no way this campaign is paying even my salary, much less everyone else who spent time on it. Kathy doesn't want me to spend another second on it. But Peter, who again, we have kept in the loop this entire time, wants to see it in our Power BI reports from the sales team and the C-suite. Normally, something this small would be rolled up into an other category, but hey, Peter wants to see it, so I make sure that it is listed. In the updated bar chart, there is a line of text at the bottom. No bar associated with it because, after four weeks, clicks, two, sales, zero dollars. I was not at the meeting after this went live, but I heard Peter went on a long spiel about the growth potential of this new campaign. Kathy and I are confident he's going to put it in his self-review about how innovative he is, assuming he still has a job. How unfortunate for business people that somebody who does not really know what they're doing and doesn't listen to constructive criticism often has sway in an organization. That happens all too frequently. I wonder if Peter was related to somebody who runs the business. That sort of thing also happens far too frequently. Our next story is by Tanks and the Funky Bun. I can definitely get that sauce for you. I'm a server and I take great pride in my ability to efficiently run my section. The key is maximizing each trip to and from the kitchen. So, rather than getting table 31 a refill, then table 32 more salt, then drop the check at 33, you check in at each table on your way to the back, grab everything in one go, and head out to the dining room, cutting down three trips into one. As long as the customer trusts me to do my job, we're all going to have a great experience. That said, my biggest pet peeve is when a customer asks, every employee that passes their field of vision for the same thing. For example, extra ranch. Why is it always extra ranch? I'm not talking about when you ask me for the ranch, then see me come from the back and it's clear I've forgotten it. I'm talking about when you ask me for more ranch, then three seconds later ask the food runner who just dropped off your fries for more ranch, then the manager who topped off your water for more ranch. Then the three of us are in the back clamoring for the squeeze bottle like a bunch of religious zealots, desperate to touch the hem of our ranch god's buttermilky robe. A fourth mf'er turns up telling us that table 32 wants more ranch. 
My malicious compliance in those moments is I make sure every single person that was asked drops their own ramekin of ranch off at the table. Then I come up last with the final ramekin and the biggest grin you've ever seen. I completely ignore the fact that most of the table is now overtaken with little dishes of ranch, rearranging some if need be to make room for my final contribution. Because hey, if you asked four people for ranch, you must want a lot of ranch, and isn't it great that you have it now? Lots of smiley faces. Meanwhile, the look of embarrassment or shame or even anger I get from the customer is enough to keep me from running headfirst full speed into a brick wall the next time someone yells at me because their ahi tuna poke appetizer has raw fish. This person is sharp and witty. Every time I read a story about some server who is just really good at their job, I get almost a panic attack thinking about it personally. I... I have such a bad memory. If somebody asked me to get this, I would try to commit it to my head and I would go in the back and I would completely forget about it. I would not be a good server. I have never had the most stellar memory. You got to keep yourself sane somehow, right? If this works for you, (laughs) more power to you. It would be hilarious to see a bunch of dishes of ranch on somebody's table. If they're embarrassed about it, Maybe they won't ask four different people in the future. But as I'm sure you guys also know, people do sometimes assume that their servers get bogged down with stuff or they forget about them. I could understand if somebody who's working a job like this forgets. Sometimes you get swamped with things. Sometimes when it's really busy, you're not as sharp. So I would forgive these people for asking. There's other ways to prevent this from being a problem instead of having like a Jenga tower of ranch dishes on the table. And yes, I'm sure you're not stacking them. That would be unsanitary. Our stories for today have come to a close. Until we meet again, have a lovely day.